Hi everybody, it's Susan from Sunrise Quilt Studio and today I am going to do another vintage block for you. This one dates back to the 1880s and it is the bow tie block. Now bow tie blocks are traditionally uh, pieced with inset seams or Y seams that we call them now. And that can put off a lot of people from trying to make them but there are different ways to make them so I'm going to show you an easy way to make them where you don't have any inset seams so here is one of the blocks that I finished and you can see it's got some easy corner triangles here so there is um, a seam here and here so I just added a couple extra seams and now we have a bow tie block that we don't have to inset any seams to um, another thing about these blocks is they're very versatile. You can make them almost any size you want and you can put them together in any kind of configuration and make all different kinds of patterns with them. So I hope you'll stay with me and I'll show you the easy way to make the bow tie block. Okay, the pieces that you need for this block are, are minimal and it's pretty simple. You need, of your print fabric, you need two pieces that are three and a half inches square and you need two pieces that are two inches square and for your background these are going to be the same as this they're going to be three and a half inches square so that's all you need to make this block first thing we're going to do is make the easy corner triangles so the way this block goes together is you got these two opposite and these two opposite so you can see this is a four patch block and then this piece is going to go here and this one here so we're going to lay these right sides together and we're going to sew from this corner to this corner. So I want to line those up. I'm going to go ahead and draw that diagonal line so that I know I'm getting it in the right spot. And I'll do that on both pieces here. And then I'm going to sew right on that line. So we've got that one and this one. Okay, so I've got those two sewn, and now I'm going to cut this outer corner away, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. So just like that, do the same with this one. And now I'm going to press open like that, and we'll have two of these units. So I'm going to go ahead and press. And then we're ready to put the block together. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so I can lay things on the bed of my machine here. So I'm going to lay the two prints, the two large three and a half inch squares, opposite each other. And put in the background squares. As you can see there's the bow tie. So I'm going to sew these two together and these two together. press and then we'll sew the two rows together. So I have my seam pressed towards my print fabric here and on here. Sew them together and just match up that seam. And I'm going to put a pin in there. OK, 
Okay, I'm gonna press one more time and the block's done. So you can see here, here is my bow tie block. So let me press and we'll look at the block closer. Okay, now when you press this, you can press it however you want. There's no wrong or right way to do this. Just press it to one side or press it open however you want. And there is the bow tie block. So there we go. So that was easy, right? Okay. So I want to show you a couple of vintage quilts that I have that are bow tie blocks and um, show you some of the different ways to that they are laid out. Okay, here is the first vintage bow tie quilt I wanted to show you. Now this one, the blocks are all set in the same orientation. They're all pointing the same direction and the background is all the same color and it's a, a bright pink. Now some of the fabrics in here are from the 1930s, some are later and there may even be some that are earlier but um, this one I just did outline stitching in the blocks. You can see those there and just left it at that and I did do a feather in the border which I'll show you down here and then I used a uh, cream binding in it so this one is a nice size quilt and the batting is an 80 20 now this quilt uh, has a couple of different things going on. This has larger blocks in it and they, the bow ties are facing in different directions. They're alternating and some of the blocks have uh, a color background like this yellow one here. There's yellow in the background. This one has a plaid in the background and then there are alternating plain blocks. You can see those here and here and I quilted a feather wreath in those and then I just did the outline quilting like I did on the other quilt. Zero in on this one. Now this one has a print in the background also but it's a very pale print so um, it's, it's faded out is what it is. I think they used uh, fabric that had been used for something else when they made this quilt. This one, some of these fabrics actually look like they're 1920s, like um, this one here. Because they're, they're smaller prints and um, they're darker as far as uh, tone goes. In fact, all of these are. Uh, now the plaids, I can't tell. I'm, I'm not good about dating plaids at all, so I couldn't, couldn't tell you with those. Um, this one up here, also I believe is an older print. So you can see how these bow ties are made where you would have set in seams for those. So um, they make them a little bit more difficult to sew by machine anyway. So that is my second bow tie. This one I call uh, Feathers and Bow Ties. This is another top that I found at a flea market and brought it home and quilted it on the long arm. And um, now it has a new lease on life. Now this quilt um, is one of my favorites. I like the layout of it where there, the blocks are alternating from side to side through each row and up and down so it creates the the negative space in between them so it makes kind of a, almost a circle there that I quilted some spin feathers in but I also like the colors in this one this one is really colorful um, and I think that's what drew, drew me to this quilt was actually the colors in it and once again this has some 30s fabrics in it and it may have some newer fabrics and even maybe some 1920s in it um, I'm not an expert on dating fabrics just um, just the feel that I get from them 
is what I'm going by. And with all these quilts, I quilted the bow ties the same way. I just did an outline stitch on them, as you can see here. And then in the centers, I did a, a spin feather. And you can see in that block here, this green block, one corner um, has a different background fabric than the other corner. See, one corner is light, the other one is a darker brown. Um, not sure why the quilter did that, but um, she did. And I think it makes it really interesting. So um, I like looking through these quilts and just um, seeing what the, what the quilters were doing. And basically they were using what they had, what fabrics they had. Here's another block, this maroon one, where one side is white, the other one is um, unbleached. And that's actually muslin there is what she sewed all of those backgrounds with. It's just muslin. Some of the time she had um, a darker colored muslin. It looks all unbleached to me because none of it is really white. It's all off-white, but some of them are darker. So she just used what she had. But there's some interesting prints in there. And then when you go up, I'm going to go up higher. I want to show you up here, there's some purples that look more modern to me. Those could be from the 40s, but uh, I don't know for certain. But there's some, some interesting things in here. This one, I can't get the, f the full view of what this was, but it looks like it might have been a cowboy print. If you can see, like there looks like a, a leg with maybe chaps on it, and maybe those lines are the lariat or something. That's uh, kind of what I think it is. You can see part of a cowboy hat right there. He's wearing gloves, looks like blue gloves. So that would have been an interesting piece to see. And then there's another block down here made with that same fabric. When I saw this block, I thought, oh, ca um, clowns. <laughs> But then when I saw the other pieces, like, well, maybe they're not clowns. There's a spur. See right there, there's a spur on that boot. So, I don't know. I can't see the faces, so it's hard to tell what that is. But I think they're interesting. So anyway, there are my three vintage bow tie tops that I have quilted. And I do have um, a set of blocks that I haven't done anything with. And I'll show you those. Now here is a set of vintage bow tie blocks. And if you look at this one here, a little closer, um, you can see it has a really small piece in here for the knot of the bow. So you can make this any size you want. You can make them larger like I did in my blocks or you can make them small like this. But you can see on the back, this is a hand stitched piece and how they they inset this piece in here so um, this one feels like it's been starched uh, it's pretty stiff um, but it also has some water stains on it so um, that might be why it's kind of stiff I haven't cleaned these blocks yet I haven't washed them so um, this has got a, a conversation print with some bunnies with a hat and a rifle. It's kind of strange. Some tents and um, some other things in there. So that one's an interesting block. This one um, is a 1930s print, I'm pretty sure. Um, a lot of ways you can tell is the white shadow around the, the design there. Uh, that's just the way they were printed back then. So there's that one. And I may have shown these once before. I don't remember. But these are a set that I picked up at a flea market. Here's another 1930s in a violet color, purple color. And then here's a darker, larger print. And here's a blue and white. And these, I believe, are all hand-stitched. 
and here is a dark brown paisley and floral design. And this one is red and teal, a little bit of yellow. And this one is red, and this one has a, a fade mark on it. So evidently this one had been, I don't know if it had been covered up or not, because there's, there's um, it's brighter up here, and then it's faded there, and the, but it's the same thing as here. It's faded here and brighter there. So I don't know. I don't know about this one. I'm guessing the fabric that she used had been laying on a shelf or something and it faded and that's just the way she cut it. Um, you can see where the fade marks are. And then here is a check. And this is a, another one with some water stains on it. And here's a red check. And a blue print. And this one is a little floral with uh, checks and stars. This one reminds me of picnic time. And here is a little floral design too. And another one. And all of the backgrounds in these are muslin, I believe. another floral and here's a plaid that has um, like a, a it's a gingham but it's got this this black black thread running through it black and white thread and that's raised so I'm not sure what kind of weave that is called but if you look in the back of these these stitches whoever stitched these her stitches are just really really even um, did an excellent job on these. Very excellent. And here is a pink floral. And this one is blue with a little rose in it. And here's another tiny gingham. It's almost like a hound's tooth design in there. Very tiny. And there's a red and another gingham. This is a weave. So it's a, this one's a woven fabric. Most of these ginghams are. It's another green woven. And then here's a little purple and green and red floral, very tiny. And this is a blue dot. I thought there were two pieces there, but there's just one. So, um, these are actually pretty good as far as size. They're, they're pretty accurate. They're pretty close together in size. So I think I could trim these up and uh, put them together. These are a set that I started trimming up, and you can see in this block here how <laughs> how the piecing is is not the best and you know here it would be easy to trim off here I would be trimming quite a bit and to make this one square would be it would just actually absolutely destroy the block and there isn't any extra in the back that I could do anything you know to to get more fabric to the front so this one is um, machine stitched and then here is another one that's kind of the same way. We've got smaller pieces that are inset, and then we've got larger pieces here. And when you compare this block with this one, they're, they're the same size, but you could see how different, let me turn it this way so you can orient it a little bit better. You can see how different the center is. Um, this one, this quilter made a great big center. This one made a tiny center. So there's different ways you can do your bow ties. This one is hand pieced. This one is machine pieced. And here's the ones that I started trimming up. 
the ones I thought were capable of being trimmed up. But then when I look at them, I'm thinking maybe I should have left them alone um, because it's cut off a lot of this part of the bow. So this part's going to wind up being smaller than the tie, I think. But now that I've got all these trimmed up, I think I'll go ahead and put them together, though, and uh, do something with those. So um, this one is a very sheer type fabric, and this one kind of looks like a 1920s to me. More ginghams here. And I don't know that any of these are hand-stitched. I don't uh, recall them being. There's two of these bows. This one has a lot of seaming. There's a seam there, right here, one here, and one there, or one here, one there, one there. That one's got three seams in it. This one has two. There's a seam here and a seam here. Okay, here's uh, another red and blue, red, white, and blue one. So these, let me measure these on my thing. Okay, I cut these down to six inches. So it's a six inch block at this point. So when I put it in uh, a setting, it'll be five and a half inches. So I have this big stack of bow tie blocks that I can do something with. So I'll have to put these on the design wall and play around with the placement and decide what I want to do with those. And these are the ones that I have been making. So these are all with the leftover scraps from, these are all, well, not all. Most of these are Lori Holt fabrics. There's a couple that are from my stash from back 20 years ago or so. And uh, I don't remember who the designer is for those, but you can see how I did the, I just pieced, instead of having a square in here, you know, I did, I pieced it along here to the easy corner triangles on those so these are the colors that I have there was some orange in a 10 inch stacker that I had that I wasn't really go it really wasn't going with the quilt that I was making at the time so um, I had those left over and so these are those. This is an 1880s reproduction. These are more Lori Holt. This one is a piece, an older piece for my stash. This one's probably 10 years old maybe. Maybe not quite that old. But these are the ones that I have made. So I'll be making a quilt out of those. When I get enough and then I'll decide how I want to lay them out what kind of setting I want and this one is a very soft look because it's a you know a lighter fabric so here we go so those are my blocks so you can see I've got quite a collection of bow tie blocks and a couple of quilts so I've got um, projects that I need to make out of these so I've been holding on to this set for and this set here for quite a while and just haven't done anything with them but um, and then I started making them I was doing four patches with my scraps and decided I wanted to do something a little bit more than just four patches so I decided to do the bow tie blocks with this pattern here so it could, they go quickly and they don't take much more time than a four patch does so um, anyway I hope you enjoyed looking at my quilts and my bow tie quilts and my bow tie blocks well that is it for this video I hope you enjoyed this one and I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my vintage quilts as well as my stack of bow tie blocks here and I hope you'll give this bow tie block 
pattern a try. I think you'll enjoy that. Anyway, if you like this video, please click that like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and click that notification bell so you'll be notified when the next video comes up. And in the meantime, I hope you're all staying safe and healthy and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. For more quilting ideas, click on the video links. And to keep up with my latest projects, click on the subscribe button. I hope to see you again soon.